Measuring oxygen in my composting material is really important to understand how happy the microbes are. Where happy is defined when the microbes decomposing my composting material have enough oxygen. Microbes prefer to use oxygen as their terminal electron acceptor because they gain a lot more energy when decomposing the organic material. We discussed both density and air-filled porosity. If we get these right, does that not mean that there will be enough oxygen? Turns out, not necessarily. If I have high temperature, does that mean that the microbes have enough oxygen? Turns out, not necessarily. The amount of available energy is critical here. The theory is that if the bulk density and the air-filled porosity are good, the microbes have enough oxygen to generate heat. This hot air then wants to rise, as hot, moist air is lighter than dry, cold air. As the hot air rises, Cold air is drawn in from the bottom of the pile, so now we have airflow, where the oxygen inside the pile is being replenished. If I have a lot of available energy in the pile, the microbes may end up using all of the oxygen before the temperature increases, and before fresh air can be drawn into the pile. Microbes are then not happy. The oxygen concentration in air is 21%. We know from experience that oxygen content in compost is considered optimal when it's above 15%. We know from experience that with oxygen concentrations below 15%, there may be some anaerobic activity, resulting in some smelly compounds being produced, especially with food waste. I have been using the Domista Instruments oxygen probe for more than 20 years. It consists of a tube that's pushed into the compost pile and a squeeze bulb that draws air from the compost up the tube and through the oxygen sensor in the box. I like it because it can easily be cleaned when the holes are plugged and the oxygen sensors are relatively inexpensive to replace. If oxygen in compost is so important, why don't I measure it constantly like I measure temperature? There's at least four reasons for this. First, an oxygen probe is much more expensive than a temperature probe. Second, the oxygen sensor is impacted by moisture and ammonia, so constant measurement in a nitrogen-rich environment shortens its life. Third, there's no need to measure oxygen continually when we establish our compost process and understand how it's working. Fourth, Oxygen content can vary dramatically. For example, in an actively aerated pile where there's lots of energy, the oxygen concentration can go from 18 to 20 percent to less than 5 percent after 15 minutes when the blower is shut off. In the next video, I'll show you a specific example of a pile that has all the right attributes, optimal bulk density and air-filled porosity, and yet has low oxygen concentration, and where the microbes may not be quite as happy. My name is John Paul. I'm a waste management specialist. Thank you.